This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, 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 Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Now we're having a very, very special friend. He used to be a neighbor right next door over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the smartest young men I know, it's George Gammon. And we're gonna have a very exciting show today because I've been on this. The IMF at Davos, Switzerland said, the world economy is gonna hit the biggest financial headwind since World War II. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? You know what I mean? That's what we wanna talk about. But more importantly, what can you do? So George, welcome back. You had a fantastic, 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 I mean, event in, in, in Dallas, the collective. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about it is, you know, when you think about what are your assets today, if you're hanging out with idiots, you're probably an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And so when, when you put on, you and Kenny put on the collective, I'm just blown away at the quality of people that showed up. They're already wealthy and they're proactive moving forward. Yeah. And, and then I'm in Walmart looking at another breed of character running around there. They're clueless. Yeah. And then what I found overall, because, you know, my whole fascination is why are some people rich and why are some people poor? <clears throat> but in 2022, the gap between rich and poor is now accelerating. It's getting wider than the Grand Canyon. But a lot of the times, the people that are getting poor is simply because they had poor teachers. Yeah, yeah, you that's know, their, right. Their parents are poor or they come from a poor background or like in my case, they're all school teachers who think even a PhD, that's all you need. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately too, they if they don't see the world the way it really is, they assume that this, they the assume the, the solution or the solutions that are presented to them by the central planners and the politicians. Correct. They just take that at face value. Is that though? Oh well, the solution for bridging the inequality gap, if you will, is just to tax the rich. We'll just take everything from the rich, and we'll just let the politicians take what they want, and then just give the table scraps to the poor, and somehow that will reduce the the wealth gap. But as Margaret Thatcher said. Uh, that'll just make everyone equally poor. <laughs> you know, what we want to do is we want to make the poor and middle class, we want to make them richer. Correct. And for whatever reason, well, it's because those people don't have that financial education that you've been talking about for the last 30 or 40 Correct. years. You uh, don't get it in school. Yeah, they assume that the way that you, you know, again, bridge that gap is is by taking from one group. Is so somehow there's like this fixed pie, and we have to realize that in free market capitalism, you know, that pie continues to grow and grow and grow. And that brings up the quality of life for the, the people at the bottom. And that's where going to the infinite um, conference with Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Because it's infinite. Yeah. Money is infinite. I think other thing is about the media is so biased today, I can't stand it. Yeah. Like 60 minutes this sun, past Sunday, just as IMF is making their announcement, this billionaire, young entrepreneur, he's giving every kid a free college education with their parents. I said, well, it's good they're going to college, but what do they learn about money? Yeah. Nothing. Or what do they learn learn about Marxism? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my point. That's my book. That's, that's my book, The Capitalist <laughs> Manifesto, you know. If you want to be a Marx, go to school. <laughs> yeah, especially college. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. So, George, how did you get so smart at such a young age? Tell us about your background. Well, I mean, I retired in 2012, and I didn't know anything about the Fed. I didn't even know what the Federal Reserve was. Where, where'd you grow up? Portland, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, but back in 2012, at the time, I was in Las Vegas, and uh, I was fortunate enough to retire with a little bit of money, but I needed to make a 5 or 6% return to make sure that I didn't have to go back to work. Right. And, uh, so you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. I was an entrepreneur for many, many years right. and I, I knew how to make money, but as far as investing, Invested. that's a completely different skill set. And did you go to real estate? What happened? Yeah. I went into real estate because I was trying to find something that was cash cheap flow. and cash flow. Yeah, that's right. And, debt. and back and in taxes. 2012, that was all of the above. Yeah. And that was a good time to buy. So I went into real estate, but I really wanted to learn kind of how things work. Yeah. And uh, that took me down the path of Milton Friedman and Thomas Sowell and people like yourself and Jim Rogers and Doug Casey and Rick Rule and Jim Rickards and Peter Schiff and all these people. 
And uh, that's where I really got the bug. That's when you get educated. Macro. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the funny thing is, you know, um, Kim met my rich dad, you know, she's going, what is real estate? What is real estate? So we moved to Portland. Yeah. And she cut her teeth on a little place called Sel, um, East Moreland. Yeah. It was you a know, golf course. Ever. Yeah, Great golf course. East Moreland Country Club. My East Moreland Golf Course. And so we, she started buying her first little uh, house there. The mark, interest rates were like nine nine or 10 percent okay and she bought a little two bedroom one bath house she put almost nothing down and she got 25 bucks a month or 50 bucks mm. a month it changed her life yeah she says i can make money with nothing yeah right and now you know kim's a freaking monster you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> in a good way but it, changed, <laughs> no, but it changes your mind you go i don't have to spend the rest of my life working mm-hmm and interesting, her father was a Mr. Stocks and Bonds guy. He goes, what are you doing? You're investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. And she had to fight her dad. And thank God she had met my rich dad and my poor dad. And so she had three dads to contend with. Yeah. <laughs> and she, 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 today, I mean, like, you know, we, we bought the biggest, I invited you to come. Kenny and I are in the biggest gold mine in the world. Yeah. We paid nothing for it. Yeah, yeah. We get in for nothing. But that's the infinite return, which Kenny's having a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. What was fascinating, going back to that last event that we did in Dallas that you referenced, is we did a, a property tour, and we saw a lot of Kenny's properties yeah. there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, some of his apartment complexes. And after he took the group around— 100% debt— well, he went, he actually had a whiteboard. Did he tell you that? No, no, no. Yeah, so he had a whiteboard. We did a tour, and he took that whiteboard, and he put it in the office. And And amortization. Yep, yep. But that's what we teach. But our schools say to go to school, get a job, and get a 401k. I'm going, oh, gag me. Mm. I mean, I would never do that. Yeah. But if you had bad teachers or poor teachers or your, that's what your parents said, that's what you do. Yeah. But it, even that in and of itself is a horrible argument. It's you just, just invest in the stock market, your 401k. Oh, because it, what happens is these financial planners, I'm sure you know this. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Who stole but, but, my pension, yeah, so, my 401k? My yeah, but see, this is very important because what the, the game these financial planners play is they only show you charts going back to 1981. And this is when Paul Volcker raised rates. So since then, we've been in a down cycle in interest rates. And, and you, sure, you can say the stock market always goes up right if interest rates are always going down. But what happens when interest rates start going back up? And that usually the cycle is about 30, 40 years. So if you look at charts of the stock market going back to 1927 to 1980 or 81 adjusted for inflation, it was pretty much flat. But see, they don't tell you that. Right. They just they just cherry pick the data of course. they want to give to you in order for them to collect their fees. But something even worse happening is the last crash was, let's say, 2008 when the repo market reversed and all this stuff. And most of these financial planners and real estate brokers, all they know is a rising market. Yeah, that's right. All, you know, since 2008, we've been nothing and happy days are here again because they kept dropping interest rates. Real estate went up, uh, stock market went up, bond markets went up. Yeah. And we were just talking to Ral Powell and he said the problem with that is that the, you know, the bull goes up the stairs. Yeah. The bear comes out the window. Or the, <laughs> I've heard the wind or the elevator, but and, yeah, the window. That's and, a little bit more dramatic, isn't it? <laughs> no, but Ralph Powell says when it comes, it's four months. Yeah. That's how fast this bear is going to go out the window. So, so anyway, so you you got so you invested in property. Where was your property? In Kansas City. Perfect place. Yeah, you know, and my objective might help some people kind of uh, think about real estate or assets in a different way. The, the first goal that I had when I retired is just to look at my monthly expenses and say, how can I get my money 
to cover those expenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? And so how can I get my cash flow to right. cover these things? So then I know that I'm never drawing my savings down. Right. And I think it sounds easy and it sounds commonsensical, but very few people just kind of connect those dots and realize that if they can create enough cash flow with their portfolio, with their portfolio to cover their monthly expenses, that is when you're financially free. Yeah, that's a cash flow game. Out of the rat race, all this stuff, you know, you got 10,000 a month coming in, you got 7,000 expenses, 3,000 net, you're free. Yeah. And there's tax breaks for it. Mm-hmm. I, and that, but in school, they get a 401k, I'm going, are you kidding me? Right. But this is the, this is the challenge for most dad's company. Like, I was listening to Dalio and all the very smart guys, but they're all stock guys. Mm. They always say, Get a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds. I don't have any. I mean, I have companies I took public myself. Right. I own the stocks, and you know, like <clears throat> silver companies I took public, and all that. My stocks, I control. And then we make most of our money from Kenny. Not most of it, but you know, we get income from thirteen thousand or fourteen thousand yeah. rental units with no, no equity in it. It's right. pure debt, and we pay no taxes, and then. You know, we invest in oil wells. Right. And uh, we don't invest in oil companies, oil wells. And so when Biden took the uh, ec- the Keystone XL pipeline, he cut that project. Oil went from $30 a barrel to $130 a barrel. 400% raise in one day. I actually liked Biden for about 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, as you know, George, the problem is, Higher oil prices cause higher fuel prices and higher food prices, which is going to wipe out the poor and middle class. Yeah, because they're the people that get disproportionately affected yeah. because a higher percentage of their income goes to those things that are going up in price. And they want to tax the rich, but there's too few rich. Yeah, well, what they don't... Yeah, We don't pay taxes anyway. <laughs> yeah, the problem with that argument, I've been hearing that a lot lately. I've been hearing yeah, that in Davos. Hear all the time. Yeah, we talked about that prior to recording, is the, the cure for inflation is not more money. That, that, that's usually the, the, the cause of inflation or consumer price inflation. The, the cure for consumer price inflation is more stuff. Yes, produce more. You got to produce more stuff. Yeah, produce more oil. Guess what? Yeah, so if you're just taxing the people who are producing, that, that defeats the purpose. That's going to create most likely higher consumer well, that's price what, inflation. That's what Sarah's complaining about is the, the, the uh, baby formula. It's, it's, they got so many regulations, they can't produce it here. Well, yeah, like, everybody's blaming this baby formula regulation on supply chain, but that's not no. actually what's happening. It's over-regulation. Yeah, right. So We just imported how many millions of cases of baby food? The United States, the greatest nation in the world, had to import baby food. Mm. Something's wrong. Yeah. Well, look at our trade deficit. I mean, we're importing everything. We're, we're consuming so much more than we produce, but, but we've God, been doing we that for pr- decades. We can print money to pay for it. Right, but but we can't print food. We can't print energy. And at a certain point, if those countries that we're getting that from say, you know what, it's 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 you're, you're we're not going there anymore. We're not playing your game. You know, but isn't that what's happening? Yeah. So a great example is let, let's look at China starting to do deals with Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And I think most in likely Yuan. Russia and Yuan. Okay. So what most people just see that and they say, oh, it's kind of the deterioration of the dollar. But no, there, there's far more to it than that. So before that happened, the China would need dollars to buy the food or the commodities, the energy they needed. The oil. That's right. So they needed to earn those dollars. So that's right. why we, they would export all these items that we buy at Walmart because they want our dollars so they buy can the go oil. buy the oil. Yeah. So they're, they're in a very difficult position there. But if they start doing these deals in Yuan for oil, now all of a sudden they can print the currency to buy the oil. They don't have to earn it. Mm. You see, smart so, for them. But yeah, but what that means is now they the, the United States doesn't have as much leverage over China right. as it once did. Right. So the United or so China can start gradually. It doesn't happen overnight, but they can start to tell the United States to pound sand. And if we can't get our stuff from China, where are we going to get it? We're not producing it here internally in our domestic economy. So then, you know, where do we get it? We get it somewhere else at a much much higher price if we can get it at all. Well, I just, you know, I'm a macro guy too, but there was a guy named Muammar Gaddafi mm. and he told the U.S. pound sand also, we're going to shift, we're going to sell our oil in dinars 
Yeah. Not in dollars, and he disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess you don't mess with the U.S. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know that you can compare Libya to, oh, I understand, to, to I China. It's a, it's a different ballgame. You there. don't mess with the money. Yeah. You know, and that, that's and when we come back, we're going to be talking more about this because you were talking about the crypto and the oh, central bank digital currency, central bank and the IMF SDRs and all this stuff. They're playing games with money big time right now. Well, they're kind of trying to control it. You know, it reminds me of the quote uh, that we were discussing actually the other day from Kissinger. Remember? What was that? And who was the main influence right. on Klaus Schwab, who runs the World Economic Forum oh, I didn't in know Davos. That. I didn't know that. Yeah, we could tell that story when yeah. we get back from break if you want me to. But the bot, what his quote was, if you control the food, you control the money. Or excuse me, if you control the food, you control the people. If you control the energy, you control countries. And if you control money, you control oh. the world. That's right. And that was what uh, Rothschild said. I care not make who makes the rule right. as long as I control the money. Yeah. And I think that's part of their objective. And we hear them out just explicitly talking about it and at Davos this week. That's real gold and that's real silver. This is $2,000. That's concentrated money. Yeah. And this here is about $35. Yeah, but more importantly, this has maintained its purchasing power over the last 5,000 years. So you can buy just as much stuff today with this little gold, gold coin as you could have 5,000 years ago. And that's why I invited you to come to our gold mine that we bought for nothing down in Utah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's because we're taught to think differently. Mm -hmm. And that's what we teach. Yeah. So we come back, we're going more with George, my friend George Gammon here, I don't know how these young guys get so smart. Old guys are getting taught by young guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. And I wanna thank today's sponsor, our friends at Gold Alliance. You know, we should all be concerned about high inflation, a looming recession, the very troubled banking system, and out of control spending in Washington. And the fact is during every major crisis in US history, many of those who failed to prepare watched their savings, investments, and retirement funds plummet while others with the foresight to own gold help preserve their wealth and purchasing power. Now we're facing several major crises at once and we may soon face even more economic turmoil. So please don't wait, consider gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind. The new free 2023 gold guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Please visit freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. Robert and I have warned that 2023 was going to be a roller coaster of volatility. After all, the stock market is largely flat this year, except for a handful of tech companies. And other asset classes are struggling to meet expectations. One survey reveals that living paycheck to paycheck is the most common lifestyle in America, even for those making six-figure incomes. Combined with hundreds of thousands of layoffs in just the last few months, it's clear a financial storm is brewing. The question to ask yourself is, are you safe? For years, Robert and I and other investors have been putting more and more money into assets that can still climb when the stock market flatlines. One investment that doesn't seem to be affected by the ups and downs of the stock market is art. In fact, one of our close friends and advisor recommends art as his number one asset protection. Even more, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500's total return over the last 27 years by 136%. If you think art as an investment is something you want to pursue, then there is a vehicle that allows you to do that without investing millions, thanks to Masterworks, our longtime sponsor. Their platform lets you invest in shares of painting by icons like Picasso and Banksy. 
Masterworks now has 800 million in assets under management. But thanks to our friends at Masterworks, you can skip their wait list. Just click the link in the description for this episode. Offerings have sold out in minutes, but Rich Dad listeners can skip the wait list going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Our guest today is a very dear friend. He used to be a neighbor right behind this wall here. Yeah. It's George Gammon, <laughs> but he found religion and moved back to Columbia. <laughs> the point here is this, is that you are who you hang out with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we talked about it. The gap gets wider and wider, depending on who you hang out with. Do you know? And uh, if you're hanging out with village idiots, guess what? You're falling behind big time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a perfect example of that because, like we were saying earlier, I retired in 2012, but I didn't start my podcast or my YouTube channel until 2019, the podcast not till 2020. And in the interim, you know, when you're retiring, everyone thinks that life on the beach just sipping pina coladas is going to be great. But that gets old after about two weeks, and you can feel yourself yeah. d- deteriorate mentally. And, and I was saying to you from Portland and Kim bought her first rental property in Portland by East Moreland and um, she found religion. She could buy something for nothing. Yeah. In the worst economy ever. Yeah. Interest rates were 9% and people are crying the blues at 5%. Yeah. And once you understand that it's all in your head and you can adjust the dials in your brain, yeah, you'll see a different world. And, and it's all about that knowledge. Yeah, and yeah. so we have, we have Ral Pell on just now. There's more opportunity today, but people are committing suicide. So what were you saying, Sarah, what's happening with uh, the during break During break, we were talking about the future of digital assets. Yeah. And I was asking George about Luna, this big crash of stable coins. Millions of dollars were lost. Now, did I get into an <laughs> argument on that one? It was civil. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is George. George, George it's a Rich Dad radio show. You know, I'm known for my tact and discipline and all this stuff, my silver tongue. And this, every time I hear it from the, you know. The experts. FNGs, FNU guys, this will never go down. I mean, oh, how many yeah, times right, have right. you heard that one? And, you know, I, I'm older. I hear it all the time. So he's yelling about this will never go down. And I go, Why? It's got algorithms. I went, right. oh, God. So I started screaming at him. I said, don't give me that crap, you know, and all this stuff. And then two days later, boom, goes to zero yeah. almost, right? Yeah, and so it sent a shockwave, I guess, is what I was yeah. trying to say earlier. And, you know, so d- does that, sh- you know, are we seeing this trembling of, you know, maybe this isn't the future? And you had a great comment about the dot-com era. Yeah, well. I think that it'll and be the real estate area too. The same thing happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it'll be similar in the sense that, uh, you know, back in the late nineties, everything was dot com, and they were getting these billion dollar valuations. And it is true that the Pets. internet was com. the future. Yeah. It is true that the internet was the future, but not all those companies, you know, 99% of them go bust. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll most likely be the same with crypto. There will come, you know, maybe Bitcoin, Ethereum, will come out winners in the long run and will be here. I don't know what purpose they'll serve. Uh, you know, I don't know if they'll be transactional in the case of Bitcoin or be more of a store digital value. reserve asset store value. I'm not quite sure, you mm-hmm. know, what pay, pl- what place it'll play, but uh, I think it'll most likely play out the same way the dot-com bubble burst in the 1990s. But, and, I, but I didn't know this, they're committing suicide? Oh yeah, there's a whole, like Reddit is going crazy over this crash. In well, fact, um, Reddit, it's another like yeah, social plot. Okay, so they're, they're talking, you know, friends of theirs committed suicide. They lost millions, millions in this, this oh, yeah. stable you, coin. You know what was fascinating is I did the, uh, know the, the Fresh and Fit podcast, you know, those two young guys yeah. out in Miami, I think you know them. And I was talking, to, I was talking to him off offline 
about cryptocurrency and they said that their friends, you know, in this 20 year old age group are so into crypto that they, that's all they have. And right. to, to the point where, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of times the fresh and fit guys will have to lend them money for lunch, not because they don't have money, but all their money is in crypto, 100% of it. They're and crypto not just billionaires, but no cash. Yeah. Or, or millionaires or thousandaires, maybe in this case, but you know, it's not in Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's in all these uh, Alt lesser coins. known altcoins that they think are going to, or have the potential to go up a thousand X mm -hmm. and they're trying to be the next, uh, you know, superstar on Instagram, billionaire or whatever that gets rich in crypto. And then they're, they just get completely wiped out and it gives them that very, very difficult lesson that, uh, you know, young investors have had to learn throughout the ages that uh, it's not different this time, uh, you know, to your earlier point. Right. We've been through this before. Yeah, no, but, it, but I've heard that. No, it'll never go down. I'm going, when, the moment I hear that, I know it's going down. Yeah. And there's always, uh, you know, Jim Rogers, I think articulated it beautifully in the market wizards books where he says, you've just got to buy panic and sell hysteria. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you can tell when there's hysteria and when Bitcoin was at 65,000. And now I'm long-term bullish on Bitcoin. Me too. But you got to pick and choose when you buy based on that panic and hysteria. And there was just, I was seeing it on Twitter nonstop. I was seeing it in social media. I was seeing it in all these like chat rooms like Clubhouse where the hysteria was just mind boggling. And uh, that's something that I think people can sense. Uh, but they need to make sure they're not getting caught up in that emotional frenzy. They're going to make bad decisions. I have, a, I have a great story. So you know how you say when um, you get out of real estate, when like the everybody comes a realtor, What's yeah. the, you know, yeah. like oh, the yeah, cashier yeah. gives you, you oh, know, no, call yeah. me. Okay, here's how I know I, I can't trust crypto yet is my mother-in-law, who's 75, sent my husband a text saying, I think I want to get into crypto. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to drop yeah. back and punt. Yeah, or, or at least it's a, it, that tells you now's not the right time uh, to buy. Yeah. Now's yeah. not the right time to buy. And then what we were saying yesterday is that the problem with bull markets is it makes stupid people look smart. <laughs> yeah. And the saying is the bull goes up the stairs bear goes out the window mm. and when it comes down it comes down fast my question is though i didn't know people are committing suicide mm -hmm. wow. i mean these are 20 year olds that probably didn't have anything really to start in got lucky saw yeah. shoot go to the moon or whatever the phrase is and then they lost it all well the and thing to is, the point they don't have any cash this is deja vu all over again because in 1929 the saying was watch out for falling bankers mm. because they were yeah. coming out of the window killing people on the street below yeah but at the end of the day, who do you blame? The Fed. It's the Fed because this is all just pe pushing Stupidity. people out the risk curve. Well, it's pushing people out the risk curve because you keep I, I, interest I rates artificially but low. Do you listen to the Fed? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, good point. <laughs> so the, the the whole thing here is, you know, get smarter. That's why we're talking about. Or at least hang around smart people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. You know, it's going to be the, as Ralph Pell was saying, man, we're going to make so much money because we have carbon credits oh. and we have biotech coming online and all that. There's more opportunity today, yeah. but not if you hang out with idiots. Yeah. And I would actually look at it from a different perspective than Raul. I, I do think there's incredible opportunities, but I think it would come in, it, it could come there, but I think it will also come in pretty much the opposite arena. And that's just old school commodities. I think we're oh, going absolutely. into a long-term super cycle. Absolutely. I think you're going to see prices of, of things like coal, uranium. And I think that the, the overarching theme and pretty much everything that you've said for the last 30 or 40 years is if you're going into an investment and everyone else is doing it and that's what they're teaching you in school, you're probably not going to make money. You're probably going to lose money. But if you're going into an investment and every single person is telling you, Robert, you're crazy. What are you right. talking about? You're don't, absolutely out of your don't mind. Do it. Don't do that. Those are the investments where you've made the most money. And it's been the exact same thing yeah. in my life and Jim Rogers life and probably in Raul Paul's life. Yeah. And what, but, you know, like we have no stocks, bonds, or mutual funds because my rich dad taught me differently. So today, you know, like I was saying, and I said this all the time, we own oil wells. We don't own oil companies. We don't own yeah. stocks. So again, when Biden cut the XL pipeline off, oil went from 30 to 130. 
holy mackerel, we got, we're making so much money today. The dangerous thing is people are being wiped out. In, yeah. Inflation's killing them, yeah. food right. and fuel. That's right. That's what scares me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, and that's the moral of the story, and that's the way these things always play out, is when the central planners try to, uh, or who knows if they're trying to do good, they might be trying to do bad. You know, going back to Machiavelli, we had that conversation the other the day. Prince. Yeah, the prince, that's right. They think differently than we do. Yeah, but any intervention they have in a free market economy, it's always going to make things worse for yeah. the poor and middle class, okay. whether it's through the insidious, uh, you know, invisible tax of inflation, or whether it's just you know propping up uh, assets that are creating uh, you know these bubbles where people get completely wiped out and misallocation of resources and malinvestment, I mean th- we've got to understand that central planning or Marxism, as you always say, this is a very very slippery slope. This oh, is God. the road to ruin, or as Jim Rogers says, you know this is the quick path to the poorhouse. Uh, we need to understand that free market capitalism is not perfect but it's the best system we have to raise this uh, standard of living for the poor and middle class. And the the crazy thing is they're trying to use inflation as a reason to tax the rich. And it's just completely perverse because the way you solve consumer price inflation is like we were saying, by producing more stuff. And uh, you know, if you're taxing all the people that are producing, are we going to have less stuff in the future? (laughs) We're going to have more stuff. No, uh, as you said, the money just moves. Yeah. Right? We moved to where we're treated the best. Yeah. Well, and as Tom Wheelwright, sorry to interject, but Tom Wheelwright always says, you can't tax the rich because the rich Don't have, right, anyway. they, they, <laughs> they earn their money in assets. So you're only taxing the poor and middle class. So it's a, a solution that will never work. And inflation mm-hmm. is the worst tax of all. Yeah. And it just causes more people. And what Ralph Powell is saying is we're going to shift to U, UBI, universal basic totally income, agree with and totally MMT, agree. which is Marxism. Yeah. Someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. The yeah. government will give you your money. Yeah, and I just want your audience to think about this for a moment because I, I really want to beat this dead horse because I think it's important. Uh, you know, we are experiencing global consumer price inflation right, right. now. Not just in the, this is a huge, huge problem. A problem well, that we haven't IMF seen since the 1970s. This is the biggest global crisis since World War II. Yeah, absolutely. That was just today. That's right. Okay, go ahead, keep going, and, excuse and, me. And their, and their solution is to do what? UBI. Let's give people more money and let's restrict the the supply of goods and services even further by making it harder for the producers to actually produce. So what they're doing by they're trying to sell this to the general public, the way we solve consumer price inflation is by creating more money and producing less stuff. It's it's the complete opposite. opposite. Yeah, we need less money and we need more stuff. So I'm asking this question <laughs> when you, when you give people money, does it increase the debt? Well, it, 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 it depends on how that money is generated. But I understand, but somebody, somebody's got to pay the piper in there. Yeah, usually it's going to be produced through the issuance of new debt. So if it's the government issuing new debt for that deficit spending, or if it's a bank issuing new consumer debt, then you've got a, a, a debt, uh, you've got a loan to match up with that new money that was created. Yeah. So is there any money in a credit card? Is there any money? Yeah, a credit card increases the money supply. No, but is there any money in it? Oh no. It's debt. Yeah. And that's how money is created. Yeah. It's you have to borrow it into existence. Yeah, that's right. That was 71. You have to borrow the money and money is created. That was a yeah. fraction reserve system. Fraction reserve system says you put your savings in a bank, let's say a hundred dollars, the bank can lend out a thousand, 10 to one leverage in there. Yeah. Now they don't even need that. No. And that's they, they why don't the, really need reserves at all to lend. They can just create money out of nowhere. And that goes back to the central bank digital currency and them trying to ban cash. And I think that's why so many young people are in crypto. They know something's wrong. They just don't have the big macro picture of it. Mm -hmm. And they get caught up in all these swings. So you were talking about CBDC, central bank digital currency. What does that mean to you, George? Well, a central bank digital currency simply means that we all, all the average Joes and Janes in society including the businesses and corporations now have an account with the central bank. In our case, it would be the federal reserve. But well, isn't that Marxism central banking? It's, it, it's absolutely 100% central planning. 
uh, because what happens now is the banking system is in charge of creating most of the new money. Now, it's a little bit different with these deficits and quantitative right. easing and whatnot, but usually it's the banking system. So if they keep that loan on their bound, if the bank continues to own the loan, they want to lend to someone who's going to pay them back, right? Really? So hopefully they're going to lend it for productive purposes, meaning the majority of money that's being created is going to create more goods and services. Right. And that's why you don't have the inflation, even though the money supply right. increases. Now, what it's happens- capitalism. Yeah, yeah. And that's why the free market works. Right. So, and that's, by the way, why the free market creates deflation. Right. Not, not inflation, exactly. prices going down. Capitalism actually brings prices down. Yeah. Because you can't compete otherwise. Yeah, which brings the standard of living for the poor and middle class up. up. Yes, but they're teaching Marxism in school. That was my book, you know, Capitalist Manifesto. Yeah. That whole thing is so backwards run by school teachers. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, exactly. So if we move into the system with a central bank digital currency, then all the bank accounts go to the Fed and then the Fed determines right. who, who gets the loan and why. And the, the big key there is the Fed doesn't have a profit and loss. They can lose money. So where a bank has to lend productively, the Fed can lend in a way that isn't productive. They can lend to whomever they want. They don't have to worry about being paid back. So that's centrally controlled money supply, debt creation. And that, to your point, is Marxism. But it's also a massive control. It's Orwell. Big Brother is watching. Yeah. They can tell exactly where you're spending your money, what are you spending on, and where is it? Yeah, so going back to the IMF and this gal that's in charge that was speaking at Davos, she was Yesterday. saying how we need a central bank digital currency and the, 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 the global governments need to come together. And, of course, the IMF would manage this in the World Economic Forum. But they need to come together to create a solution for cross-border payments. This is how she's selling it, is that all these poor people have to pay Western Union, you know, 20% fee or whatever. And she's right, but she doesn't care about that. She just cares about the solution, which is the global government's coming together with this payment system for cross-border that's seamless and free. But, of course, we're using a central bank digital currency. And then the reserve asset becomes the SDR, which is the currency of the IMF. So then right. they have control over the money supply, and it's it's not as uh, it's not the system we have now with the United States having the global reserve asset or the global reserve currency and the banking system creating that uh, currency globally. Right. The biggest thing to, with uh, with central bank that I'm not you know not financial. I mean not crypto smart or anything is, but it's Orwell's big brother is watching. Mm. They can track you, and the reason I like this stuff here it's real gold. This has been here since the Earth was formed. This is silver, been here that earth is formed. I can run with this and spend it anywhere in the world. They can't track me. Yeah. And so when Bitcoin came out, remember that they were saying, oh, they're going to use it for the drug trade and all that. I said, well, you think dollars aren't? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, how yeah. can people be that stupid and drink the Kool-Aid from the Fed? Well, not not everybody is. I, know, I, 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 know. I was I was in the airport yesterday, and I was going through the line, uh, the security line. I actually saw someone wearing a shirt that said "Make 1984 Fiction Again." <laughs> <laughs> what does '84 mean to you? Because that's a really interesting book, you know. Well, it's it's pretty much what we're seeing play out right in front of our own eyes. I mean, it was supposed to be fiction. But uh, in my opinion, this is the objective of these Davos types, you know, the global elite. And I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I think they're coming right out and saying that, hey, we want the world to consume less energy. We want to reduce oh. the population, uh, or the, uh, the birth rate, they'll say. And we want to, you know, gain, we want power and control because it's in your best interest. Look at what the WHO came out with, you know, this, this uh, health treaty. Did you see that? The World Health Organization. Yeah, they came out with this uh, opinion. I don't know if it was this uh, proposal for a treaty where basically they control in the future every country's uh, position on lockdowns, on mask wearing, on all of these things that we've seen play out in 2020 and 2021, the, the who wants to be in charge of all of that. So all these countries sign treaties that say, yes, we're giving our health sovereignty over to you global elite. But that's the World Health Organization, the World Bank, everything is world. Yeah. There's no sovereign. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and no, I mean, no national yeah, world. That's right. Well, there's, they, they, so you've got these two opposing forces going on right now. Most of us in the real economy, and I think the people listening to this show, they want decentralization. They, they want control of their own destiny where they want privacy also and privacy. Freedom. Yeah. And that, you know, a few privacy, freedom, you know, a few words like that. That's, and they want it for their children. Right. Where these Davos types, they want the opposite. They want complete centralization because they think that all of us are inferior, stupid, stupid yes. dumb rubes. And, you know, we're only going to make things worse. So we need to give them all of our freedoms, all of our liberties. They need to have complete control to be able to micromanage our life. And that's the only way that, you know, in their minds that we're going to survive. But that's that's what Rich Dad Poor Dad is. My poor dad, brilliant, brilliant academic, but flat broke. Mm. Yeah, but he thought all he needed was his PhD and uh, and Stanford and Northwestern University of Chicago. And he just thrived on that. And my rich dad who never went to school goes, Is it, your father's an idiot. But they think they're superior. Yeah, that's right. They think they're above the law, some of them. The other thing too, the thing about, you know, like the reason we're like macro is history does repeat. Mm. You know, as Jim Rogers says, one thing he, history teaches you that people don't learn from history. <laughs> yeah. And so when I read Ann Rand and Atlas Shrugged, yeah. you know, I said, where did, where did John Galt go hiding? I went, do I have to hide? I mean, I, I was, you know, she's a, she was, she, she escaped from Russia. Yeah. Right. So when I read that book, where is, you know, where is John Galt hiding? I went looking for a place to hide. And so that's why Kim today is on, I won't say it in South Carolina on a private Island hiding with people who subscribe to Ayn Rand. Yeah. Where are you hiding today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 you look at books like 1984 and Atlas Shrugged, and you see, my gosh, how on earth could they have seen this coming? It, you know, these were supposed to be fictional books, but they predicted the future and what we're living through now. I think it's just because, to your earlier point, history repeats. Or if it doesn't but repeat exactly, it rhymes. <laughs> I mean, I was doing a lot of research just over the last couple of days on World War One, and how World War One started. And it is eerily similar the to what Weimar we're seeing. The Weimar Republic. Well, well, that was uh, World War Two, And as far as okay. their hyperinflation, but oh, World no, no, War no, One was really the the uh, was the, reparations the Duke. from World War One that set up. I mean that that's what the it was a chain chain react. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, but the, the Duke gets shot right in uh, wherever he was in Slovenia or something like that. Uh, uh, I can't recall where he was, but basically, then you have the two groups. You know, Austria and then the the yeah Austria and Hungary, and then the other group. Uh, you have all of these larger countries that back one of the smaller countries that, that hate each other. And, you know, then the world gets kind of separated into two groups and then they go to war. And you see the same thing happening today with Russia. You've got larger countries that are siding with them and then you've got other countries that are siding with the West. So you have two economies, especially Ukraine, that, that are, are relatively small. Now they're wildly important because they provide a lot of the food and energy for the cool. world, uh, that's for sure. I'm not saying they're not important. U Ukraine is the breadbasket to so many countries throughout the world. Yeah, right. You got natural gas. You got you got potash. You got fertilizer. You've got lumber. Lithium. You've got a lot lot of stuff there Lithium for in, batteries. in Russia and yeah. Ukraine. But my point is, you've got uh, from from a standpoint of GDP, you've got two countries that are relatively small compared to the Japan's and the China's and the United States. But yet they're in this conflict, you know, everyone, all these huge countries that do have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, economic power and huge militaries are picking sides. And it's, you can see it escalate and it, it just feels the same. Obviously, I hope it's not. And uh, there are no certainties. There are only probabilities. But uh, the point there is if you look at history like World War One, World War Two. Uh, you know, all of these wars, uh, they, they usually start the same way. What an exciting time, huh? Yeah, it is. I think it goes back to that Lenin quote that you and I have discussed extensively that where he said, there's decades that go by where nothing happens. And then there's weeks that go by when decades happen. Yeah. And I think, and this I, is I not said this. John Lennon is Vladimir Lennon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me clarify there. Yeah, yeah. The Beatles were pretty profound. But not that profound. <laughs> yeah, and I think that we were 
in 2020 and 2021, I said this on my channel many times, I, I used that phrase to describe what we are going with from a standpoint of our personal freedoms and liberties. Yep. In 2022, I think you've got to look at uh, the economy and you've got to look at censorship you've got through to go that to lens. Ma- you've got to go macro. Yeah, you, but you've got to look at it through yeah. that lens of understanding that we're going through weeks where decades are going to happen. But, but this has happened before. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing. As, as like, like Roger says, history proves people don't learn from history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going, holy mackerel. Yeah, and you know, there's no excuse. You were talking about how people need to educate themselves and to really reevaluate their own personal network and start hanging out with people where yes. they're the dumbest one in the room. So anyway, thank you, George. Thanks for keeping up the great work, my friend. Thanks for inviting me. Always nice a pleasure. <laughs> Again, nice to learn from younger guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Rich Dad Radio Show. Really old friend or young young old friend or whatever it is. George Gamma <laughs> lives left next door here. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or on YouTube. Please leave a comment. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason. We don't make any recommendations. You know, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. And um, the most important thing is if you have a friend or family member or somebody who needs to hear this show, go to richdadradio.com and listen to this program together and then discuss it. You know, we talked about high tech, high touch. You know, get to know the people you're talking to. Mm. So with that said, Sarah, final words for you. What do you think? Final words. I thought it was a great conversation. Thank you again for your time. Um, It's always awesome to have you around. Uh, the biggest thing that we I... kind of miss them upstairs. I know, I yeah, do. I, I look at the dark <laughs> office. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, the interest, most thing, interesting thing I'm taking away is the bi-panic cell hysteria. I mean, <laughs> I feel like we're in the biggest opportunity of our lifetime oh, right God, now. Ungodly. And so, if, and that applies to all asset classes. Yeah, absolutely. So I think now more than ever, financial education is, is important. And listening to shows like this, and there's no excuse not to survive or thrive during these economic turmoil times. It's the most exciting time. But if you hang on to old ideas. Right. And um, Bert Doman said that, you know, the people who are going to get killed are the buy, hold, pray yeah. crowd. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a big, he's, he wants to teach Robert how to sell, you know, what is it? Short, short the market yeah, or something. Uh, <laughs> that went over well. Um, he wants to you know, short a market. I want to learn how to buy a bar. Because <laughs> I think drink is going to go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Anyway, so thank you for your time. It was a great show. Fantastic. Final words. It's always nice to have George around. It's like I said, we miss you here next door. You know, it's really... Yeah, it was nice. It was really, really nice. Well, it's great to be back, and I really appreciate you guys inviting me on. Yeah. It's always a pleasure, and it's always a fascinating conversation that I, I truly value. And every time, uh, you know, we get to speak, it's it's just something that I'll remember for a long, long time. We we'll so, always learn something from each other. Yeah, we? we do, don't we? Yeah, it's changing so fast. Like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. So, anyways, a lot of magic going on, but I think I'll always remember this. The bull goes up the stairs and the bear comes out the window. Yeah. And I think the bear is about to jump. Thanks, George. Thank you. And thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.